What is up guys, welcome to the channel. This episode is the POC that without power tools or even a good blacksmith tools, <laughs> without any experience, you can still make Damascus or any kind of Sanmei knife. So let's talk about the theory. The steel must be super clean, so you have to grind it, you have to clean it with acetone or alcohol, and after that, you will be able to weld it all around and make a final billet which goes to the forge. From my perspective, it is a good idea to use gloves and even with gloves, avoid to touch the clean surfaces. Also, if you can, try to find a good metal supplier because I've bought very poor quality steel plates and I had to spend a lot of time to prepare the billet. So now the forging, and I must say that I am completely not confident with hammering high carbon steel which is almost white. It is because the high carbon steel is super sensitive for cracks if you overheat it. And that is why forge welding is super difficult. You can easily over punch the bullet and make cracks inside the steel. So that is why I've decided to follow a rule, make the same thing again if you think that you succeed. So I've hammered three times, very lightly, after that again three times and just to be absolutely sure that everything is welded once again. Seven times. I'm removing a slack to verify if the bullet is forged and to be honest it was very cool that during the, all of the grinding I didn't see three different kind of steel, it was looking like one solid piece. It makes me feel that I succeed. So I continue to forging and start to create a blade. Guys, I must say that working with striking anvil is pain in the guts. It's got zero rebound, so if you work with very thick materials, it takes hours to make a knife from a billet. I want to explain why I didn't mount my anvil to the ground yet. It is because of few things. First, in my workshop there is no proper ground, so I cannot mount it. And the second thing is that if it's super hot, I like to take my anvil and all of bladesmith stuff outside of my workshop because inside when the forge is running is something around 55 degrees Celsius. So you basically are baking. So I'm removing slack again to verify where I am. The scales are twisted, so the core is not exactly straight in the middle. Guys, this is why you don't forge the Sunmay blade, you just cut it. Here's I'm forging a final shape of the blade and also a tongue and um, I've tried to twist to the right position the scales but it didn't work at all so I must be prepared that the line between the scales and the core will be not the same on both sides of the knife. I'm okay with that but um, next time I would definitely cut it not forge it. Forging is done, so I'm grinding the final shape of the blade and to remove all of the slack. Um, next, I'm creating a bevel and prepare the blade to the heat treatment. Okay, 
so most of the grinding is done both sides and the only issue is that I've got the lamination I hope that it is not going so deep and I will be able to make this if it's go too deep I had to make it a little different than this but if it's not I really like this design and I think I will go with it um, anyway let's grind it and check if the, the lamination goes deep or not So I have to grind a little more than I've planned to, but I'm okay with this design, it's still looking good. More important is that the lamination is gone and the blade is okay. I think we can go to the next step which is grinding a tongue and prepare the blade for the heat treatment. The normalizing cycle is very important for every single forged blade, especially if we talk about Sanmei or Damascus. Sometimes I'm not doing any normalizing cycle if I know that the steel which I'm using to stock removal knife are prepared on the furnace. But in this case it is absolutely necessary to prepare the blade by making at least three normalizing cycles. We are after three normalizing cycle and during every each of them I've noticed that the blade goes bent to one side and it is because of the thermal expansion is different and because of the scales are different thickness. Um, I must be prepared that the blade during the quenching goes warp really badly. So I've prepared a uh, flat bars and also I'm going to use this half inch thick plate which is on my table and I'm going to squeeze the blade when it's still hot to minimize the warp which is going to happen. I've got a little more time because uh, the core is made from NC6 steel. Um, this is cool because it gets... it took a little longer to create all of the martensite inside during the quenching. So I hope that everything go well and I'm not going to lose this blade completely. So, to the oven, heat up the oil, and the big moment. My god, I have never get some warp like this. It was like about half inch above the uh, plate in the middle of the blade. Absolutely terrible. I hope that this um, squeezing gonna help because uh, I have a really bad feeling uh, about this knife. I'm going to leave it for the 5 minutes and after that I think we are going to verify and see what next. I don't feel it at all. Okay. 
Okay, yeah. Yeah. Ay, 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 ay. Okay, so it is bad. I must say, it is bad. Uh, but the blade is hard and I think I'm going to save it during the tempering cycle. So I've clamped the blade to the flat bar and it is going to the oven for 2 hours and 200 degrees celsius. Okay, so we are after tempering. The blade is beautiful and golden color, but most of my concern is about the straightness. So I'm going to remove the straps. And we are going to verify. Ah, oh, come on, it's stuck. <laughs> we are going to verify if is it straight. Come on. Hmm. I don't know, to be honest. My god. <laughs> I believe we succeed. So, after the heat treatment, it's time to get the hand sanding. And I doubt that anybody likes it, but if you want to make a nice looking blade, it must be done. I'm preparing the guard model sand. It is the same sand I've used the last time. It can be reused. The casting mold and I'm lighting the porch. This shiny up one is designed exactly for the casting purpose. And to be honest, I just don't understand people at semi scientific channels who are wearing t shirts and playing with liquid metal. Guys, just remember if something goes wrong, the proper clothes can save your health or even life. Be prepared for a worst case scenario. It is better this way. Okay, so the guard is casted and it looks good so far.
This is beautiful double colored maple bird. I think it would be just perfect to the sun maple. Uh-huh, yep. This is the second time I've been hit by grinding belt. You cannot see it, but I have respirator mask, hood, PPE headphones and the glasses. So, head and face is fully covered. Remember, be prepared for worst case scenario.
So guys, making this knife was a really great challenge, but also a great fun. I will definitely try it again. So if you like this idea, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to support me and see more, subscribe my channel and click the ring bell button to get notification that the new video is uploaded. This is all. Have a great day. Bye bye.